Commander viewers, and welcome back to the Southman Auto Channel. Old Commander Joe's pappy said, son, you're going to drive me to drinking if you don't stop driving that hot rod Lincoln. And that's what we got here is a hot rod Lincoln, 2005 Lincoln executive, or a signature, I don't know. Either way, this hot rod Lincoln's going to quit driving because the gas hole won't come open, so the fuel door won't open with the push button on the door. I was like, ah, that's easy, just a bad solenoid or something like that. And I started looking at checking it. And that's not what it is. Um, and I don't believe it's just a simple bad switch, broken wire in the door flex, you know, something easy peasy. You guys like seeing the diagnostic thought process, so I stopped my process. Thought I'd bring you along, show you where I'm at. So my thought process, I always start with the simplest thing first. Uh, you know, no wiring diagram, no nothing. We know it's just a button and it has a solenoid. Now we're in the trunk and I just, you know, pop the carpet back. Figured I could get to the solenoid. Here's the emergency fuel door release to get the door open. I see the wires run back in that direction. I can't get them unplugged, so I simply pierced them. Stuck a test light in line with it, figuring it's just a solenoid. When I push the button, uh, we should have, you know, a light bright back here. So I'm gonna go push the button. toggled the button several times and you should have seen that there was no light so that tells me uh, that we're either you know missing a power or ground back here something's not making it back here uh, I did take a quick look at a diagram to see that this is a full-time ground and then this is a power supply so I simply moved my test light with a clamp on it stuck at the ground we still had no power so uh, so that's that so nothing's making it back here I had a diagram out it has a fuse let's check the fuse According to the diagram, it is fuse number 15. And that is clearly labeled, yeah, second one up. Now, Ford, you gotta be careful because this is not a, you know, flip it around, look at it. That's the fuse that's actually, you know, this mirrored image. So it's actually this fuse right here, fuse number 15, the empty slot is 17, which should be hot at all times because you can get your fuel door open whenever you hit the button. I mean, get the test light. So it works. Whoever came up with this clamp on a Tesla should be dragged out the field. They should all have vice grips on them. So there's that. There's fuse 15. Lights up there. Lights up there. So our fuse is good. We know that. So those are two quick and easy things that we can do. Now we'll run inside. And at this point I assumed, okay, we either have A, a bad button, or B, you know, a broken wire. You know, something in the door flex is the most likely cause. Car's got a couple hundred thousand miles on it. And it's what, 14 years old. Uh, the door's been opened and closed a lot. So we come to the driver's door. Now that fuse technically should feed power to one of these wires. I don't remember which one. Uh, you know, power comes in. And then when you push the button, it sends power to the back. Now I'll hook up a ground here on our door striker, which should be a good ground. Come here and I have no power and that's where I stopped I said okay you have my attention uh, the door flex is kind of a pain in the hooski to get open just because of the way the they completely encase them with rubber so I'm gonna leave this out to get this out I just stuck my knife under it and popped it up and out uh, it has these little wings on it they slide out relatively easy so we'll leave that out uh, now we have to look at a diagram to see what the best next logical step is um, because we've done what's easy, easy to get to, or you know, a few minutes in. What would be nice to know is, does the system break down anymore? Are there other connectors we can go to? Uh, perhaps we could even stick power on this. You know, we can just temporarily power it, hit the button. That would verify that everything to the back is A-OK. -okay. But the fact that we're missing power, I think, is more concerning. Trunk button works, something to know. Now I know this is super cheesy, just shining it at the screen, but bear with me, folks. Uh, so I'm just on Identifix here, because I want to get a factory diagram, because color wire diagram that I looked at earlier didn't show any connectors. It showed the fuse and the button, and, and that was it. So what we want to do is look up fuel door, and it happens to be our first one. And like I said, I'm going to be looking for, you know, connectors. So here's fuse 15, 15 amp. We check that. We know that's good. All right, now that comes down to a connector, the C248. It also goes off to power distribution, so this fuse feeds other things. That's a good, that's a good thing to know because we can also determine, you know, if or where the circuits broke. And then we have another connector, C510. 
and that's where it changes color from dark green to violet with yellow. So let's see where that connector is. C510 looks like it is in the driver's door. So I'd rather not pull the door panel off at this point because the likelihood of it being you know, broken here is pretty unlikely. If it's gonna be broke anywhere, it's, you know, door flex, big time brake area. Uh, not so much in these cars, but in other cars I've seen it. Um, so let's see if we can get another connector before that. The C248. Where does he live? Or she. Is it not highlighted? Oh, there it is, C248. Okay, so this is up by the firewall. So that's, that one's right up by the, uh, is that right up by the brake booster? Let's see, that's a big honky round one. Oh, okay, that's the main one that goes through the firewall. Okay, so that, that's a spot that we can check it. Um, and it gives us our circuit numbers down here. Okay, so that's, would probably be my next place I would go is the power making it into the car because if it is then we can eliminate all everything under the hood let's see uh, power distribution here so there's fuse uh, 15 that comes out c248 that's what we just looked at so it must be pin 37 what else does this feed it feeds the fuel door release and a lumbar adjustment switch so that would Let's go check to see if the lumbar works, because if the lumbar doesn't work, then we know it's not the door lock switch, or the door flex. Does that make sense to you? If we have no lumbar, that has nothing to do with the door flex, depending on where the splice is, splice 245. Wearing harness, main body, near TO. TO of connector 211, I don't know what that means. Okay, that's C510, that was the one that was inside the car, right? Is that what we were, uh, yep, that was the one that was inside the car. These go to different connectors, so if we know, yeah, let's go see if the lumbar works, just because that's the easiest thing to do. Uh, that is just, that's just power seat. Must say, it must have got him. Oh, it's got him on the face here. Oh, he's moving, he's moving there. Does the seat have one? Because it said left and right. Oh, yeah, it's got one right here. Oh, so listen. I don't see anything happening on the seat, nor do I hear anything. So that's good, either, now don't make assumptions because that could just mean that both of our lumbars are broke. So I say, in this case, uh, splices are a pain in the hooski to find. Uh, I'm gonna say we're gonna go to C248 and uh, make sure it is pin 37. 37, dark green, 16 gauge wire. Okay, so pin 37. Dark green. Tell you what, should we just print that out? How do you print? Is there any printing thing? We'll print that out and then maybe we can just get the back off that connector. We'll print that out. All right, and then if we have power here, then, then we're going something different. If we have power here, then we know our problem is from this half of the diagram in. If we don't have power here, then we've eliminated it from the fuse box to, you know, to that connector. So that's something, uh, that's something. That's just something, dark green. Let's go find a dark green wire. What's up, Mrs. O? I'm cooking. What's it look like? You got this new kitchen, you could have your own cooking with Mrs. O. Oh uh, yeah. What do you think about that? What uh, what do we have here? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Green stuff. Mm hmm. Hey. I don't know about them vegetables, but I hear that's a real fun guy. Yeah. Some fun guy for a fun guy. Ooh, red meat, huh? Mm hmm. 
Is that some, some of your buck deer you killed? I think that's your buck deer. What, that's my buck deer? This is, this is some... It looks like what are you doing? Seeing where that meat's from. <laughs> Doesn't look like back strap. Oh, you're trying to guess the cut? Yeah. I'm thinking that's from the top round out of the hind quarter. You're wrong. What is it? It's tenderly. I suck at life. <laughs> Basically. We need some stuff out of our print. Watch out there, Wolvie. What are you working on? Fixing junk. Yeah? Lincoln. Hot Rod Lincoln. You gotta figure it out? No. Oh, yeah. I don't. We're on a... Let me know if my guess is right. About what? About the Lincoln. What's your guess? That Wrong. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> Probably is wrong. Well, what did you think it was? I said it was somewhere in the in the door, in the button, in the Wrong. Door, in the door here. Uh, wrong. Have you proven that? Wrong. Yes. No. Well, kind of. I like to see if I guess right, then I like, oh. you know. Hey, just shoot parts at it till they stick, right? Yeah. Alright, thanks. So I imagine that is our connector back there. Must be the one to the left. And that's a dark green wire right there. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, some days it's better to be lucky than it is good. 37 was right on top. We're going to very gingerly probe into that with a T pin. I've got to test it. Make sure we have good connection. The key should not have to be on. This should be a full time power. Just to be sure. We got nothing. We got nothing, folks. I just want to make darn sure I've got a good connection. Sometimes probing it from the backside, you don't get it in all the way. Okay. I'm going to assume I don't really want to pierce that wire just because of where it's at. I'm going to leave my T pin right there. We're going to. Oh, it's probably right in your light. We got nothing. I'm going to. We're going to do something. We're going to live dangerously. Hold on, folks. We're going to grab a jump wire here. And we're going to run it from battery plus. Unfused. That's stupid. Jump wire is attached to battery plus. Let's make sure we're checking on our test light. It lights. Oh, I'm shaky. What the frick is wrong with me? Okay, we got battery plus on that. Now, if we're T pinned in right, hold on, baby. Here we go. Let's go inside here and push the button. Let's see if anything works. Do we have lumbar? Where's our button over here? Here, listen. We have lumbar, so that means this will work now. Bada bing, bada boom, we didn't have to do anything. Well now, we can put that back in. So that works. Okay, well, we've narrowed it down. Anywho, let's unhook this up to battery before something blows up. Chances are our problem's in there, because that's where our fuse is. Wires run out of it. Our wires broke between point A and point B, but now we have direction. Oh, I have a confession. Oh, am I right? Oh, I'm not right, Emma. You're joking me. <laughs> How do you know me so well? And when you said tenderloin, do you mean like the inner loins? Yes. Like the inner, like Under. the best cut? Yes. Well, don't smoke it. I listen. I'm listening. Last time I made it for you, man, the same way, and you were just. Can you do them. a fancy flip with your pants? Oh no, no, no! You're gonna burn me. Crack them loose! I'll flip them. Crack them loose. No. Let me do it. No. Oh, Todd, a banshee. Yes. Answer the phone, will ya? Or ruin your meat. All right, I answered your phone. Is my lunch ready? Yes. That ah, freaking phone again. <laughs> you want it to ring, don't you? Some days. I answered the phone for you again. Thank you. Yeah, I'll be right back. I'll wash my patties. Okay. All right, folks. So I'm going to eat some lunch. And uh, 
I'll pop that cover back on because I don't think we'll need to be back there. I'll put stuff in the trunk back together, put the carpet back up there. And then this is where we have to use logic because I do not believe that there was another connector, right? Let's just have a look here. Bear with me, I'm just giving you a little handy here. Let's see. No, that is a connector with that, that C248. So between that fuse box and that connector, there is nothing other than a connection here at the box, um, which I would assume is most likely foul point. On older Lincolns, I think I've done some relay relocation stuff. I think we'll yank that fuse out, make sure it's just not a crappy connection there. Um, yeah, the wires come out there. It'd be easy enough to just to lift that up and have a look. See, this does get pretty hammered with salt and whatnot, as you can see. Uh, other than that, I don't know if Ford gives us harness layouts as far as where, what direction, you know, that goes to get over here. You know, um, obviously it comes up through this harness. Does it? Is that obvious? Yeah, it does. Down and around. So we'll do some visual inspections where that runs down through there. Uh, sometimes we can just find the spot. Uh, the other option, if this was you know your car and you want to mess with this, just cut the wire and just do an overlay and put your own fuse in, and uh, you know you'd be done with it. But we'll see if we can find it first. And we're gonna flip it over once. There's our dark greeny. There's our dark green weenie right there. That's got to be around about where it fuses it is. It's that way right there, and it's not as nasty as I thought it was going to be. And a little slight tug case that's broke back there. Bear with me, folks. pretty good up in there. Maybe I can gingerly get it in the hole. Yeah, we got power there. So we didn't narrow down much other than the fact that it is not a green crusty mess on the bottom of this box as I anticipated. There's some green crusties growing but not in an area in which it concerns us. So now we know that the wire is broke between here and there. This harness comes down super salty, super crusty in this area here where it bends. Um, let's go underneath the vehicle and see if we can't follow this along to see what we see. I'm gonna get this all snapped back together here. So we're up in the air and that is our harness. That runs down from our fuse box, goes around. That's the body mount I was telling you about. And that goes through there, up above the frame. So what does that mean? It means it goes up to, uh-oh, in the spirit of Christmas. Do you see what I see? Said the mechanic man to the little YouTube people. That will focus you. That's the green crusties, and that's on our harness. Do you think that's our wire? Well, that wire runs across up in here, goes up there and makes the turn right. The little rusty thing you see, the wire loom behind it, goes around, makes the turn, comes through that loom over there, and up through that fender liner. And then when it goes up to the fender liner, it pokes up through, you know, probably around about somewhere it's up in here and then goes into where. But however, I think we're going to focus our efforts on the green pus sack that's growing right there. Oh, what do you know? That's in a real sh spot to get to. What the frig do you do? That's, that's a metal bumper. What's this thing made out of? Plastac. Is that accessible from under the hood? Those are the horns. Let's let it down. Look through the open cavity there. Perhaps we can see it better from there. At least pull it up or something. Let's see. 
Sometimes you gotta make the decision, folks. I talked with a customer, and given where that thing is, up in there, of course it's black, darkness, no parents, um, where that thing is, I did pop the little piece off the front up there to see if I could see it, and I can, but it's right directly behind the headlight there below the horns. And what would have to happen is we'd have to pull the front bumper cover off to get the, you know, the header panel off there. But to do that, it just turns into a disaster, just, be, you know, given the amount of rust and stuff on the car. And I don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill. This car's got 200 plus on it. It's their winter car. Uh, they got the good Lincoln for the summer. So I opened up the harness here. We're going to do an overlay against my better judgment. Uh, it is the least expensive option. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to overlay the harness. I think this is the wire we need. We're going to check. If it is, then we're just going to run another wire along this harness, zip tie it to it, and then zip tie this harness back up into the plastic bracket that it came out of and, you know, ultimately rub through. So that's the plan. Let's uh, tap into that and see if that is our wire. Hey, look at that, that's our wire. So all I'm doing is pulling the fuse, put the fuse back in, and our light lights up. So that is our wire. Goody, goody. So now that we have our wire exposed down there, I cannot believe how stiff this harness is. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of cray cray. I mean, it is. She's a stiff one. Where's my knife? You want to cut right between the veins. Very gingerly, just lightly drag that across there. You want to open up your skin. There it is. Because we've got to be able to tape it back up. Alright. We'll only open what we have to. Is that the green weenie right there? Looks like it. You get a poking apparatus. Yo, what's up, dog? Oh. Is that the one I want? Nope, that's green with orange. Probably on the bottom, because it's on the bottom way back there. It's a blue down there. Ooh, I think I see a green one. Nope, that's black and green. Oh, we're so close. So I find it, we can cut it. Where you at, little guy? Oh, she is all the way to the bottom. There it is. I see it down there. You can't hide from me. I can't see. There she is. Yeah, I'm going to leave that in there. Keep her spread open. Let me get something to pull. See if we can get down in there and get a hook on it. Without hooking anything else. Well, I'm gonna cut you. Hopefully there's not more than one green wire in here. Gosh, these wires are so stiff. It's not even cold. I haven't even talked dirty to it. There we go. There she is. Oh, so there's your problem, lady. There's your problem, lady. Got the green crusties. Not anything anybody wants to get. So 
then what we will do, we will tape this up all nice again. Now we're not going to be able to tape our wire that we're overlaying is the only thing because we just it's not accessible. So I'm going to tape that back up. We're going to leave our wire out that we need and then we're going to carry on. Free tip Friday for you. Need a little bit of tape? Rolls too big. Grab yourself a small quarter inch drive socket and start winding her up. Now I would love to take credit for this tip, however I cannot. Many of my viewers, several of them, have told me about this tip. And I've used it a few times since. I wish I could give credit to one single individual, but I'd have to go back through several hundred videos and find out who's the first guy who said it to get the credit. So we'll just give credit to all of you. This is a free tip from the viewers. Looks good about there. Hold that with your meat nuggets. Slice it. And now you've got a small roll of tape that you can get in to do what you need to do. Now, is that handier than a... Well, I won't finish that one because it's kind of vulgar, but... You're picking up what I'm putting down, right? You see how handy that is? Go right back through and cover up our mess. Boom. So what has to be done now is we have to make sure the harness does not come out of this plastic track, which I had one piece of tape here. I assume there was more that had fallen off uh, at some point uh, throughout this car's life. So we're just going to take the classic zip tie. We're just gonna pull zip ties around this just to keep the harness from coming out and rubbing. So I'm going to put several zip ties down along here in case these break in the future. Of course, you guys can't see crap. Trust me. So the zip tie is just going way down here, but I've got the best spot. You might ask yourself why I don't like overlays, and that's simply because we know the one wire was broken chafed through, but we simply don't know if there's others that are in there that are also chafing. I'm sure we'll find out in the future, but that is typically why I don't like to do an overlay is because you just you just don't know, you know, especially, you know, if it's a broken wire, if it's a chafe wire. Um, I'm gonna take and leave us plenty of extra here, we'll chop off the bad end. But that is always my thing, you know, if you've identified the circuit quickly as an open, which we did, you know, at that point, like saying stop right there, do an overlay and move on with life. But if there's a rubbage issue, you just don't know where it is or why it is or what's happening, but you gotta make a decision just based on the age of the car and you know the amount of time or money the customer wants to spend in this case. So here's what I did under here. This is our overlay wire. I used a wire that I have here that has really thick insulation um, because where it runs up through this direction, there's about a four or five inch run that I can't get to to zip tie. I zip tied it. Well, I don't know if you guys will be able to see up in there or not. You can see the one zip tie I put on it right there on that side of the mount. So it's just, just a little bit of an area that I'm not going to be able to zip tie or tape or fasten, you know, 100% securely. I uh, did a crimp and heat shrink on it. I know that one supports right in your way. So I'm going to take and get this taped up and then bring this stuff back over and, you know, tape that back over. And we should be in good shape, everything should work. Probably should check it before we tape it, but I like to live dangerously. Um, she has a question about whether she should drive it or I drive it, should drive it. Like, yeah, I'm not getting in the middle of this whole lawsuit thing between her and another shop. Okay. If there's oil in it, currently, oil in it. and it starts and runs, and there's no lights on of any sort, then I can only assume that it is okay to drive. Okay, so she had an oil change on Saturday. Okay. She drove it every day since. The light came on today. Something to do with her gas or something, okay. she said. And then she took it in. They told her that it didn't appear to have any oil leaks and they filled it up. And it was out of oil. 
from Saturday to today. What's today's Thursday? Well, I don't know if it was out of oil from Saturday to today. That that wouldn't make sense, right? Driving every day in the oil, it probably wouldn't. I wouldn't wouldn't think so. You would hear something. Something yeah. would happen. What shop was it? Did she say? No. The other shop. I don't we'll call it. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not. I'm I'm ugly. I'm not stupid. Okay. Uh, short of seeing the vehicle, I cannot tell her whether or not it is safe to drive or not. Okay. And I would say exactly like that. Because you're not going to get the personal okay from Mr. O. Because okay. I ain't dumb. Yeah. Good luck. And there we have it, folks. The finished product. Here's our overlaying, overlaid wire. Overlying wire. This stuff is taped back up. As good as I can get it. I put the fiber stuff back on it, which wraps around it several times. But we did have to cut it to open it. So, um... I think that's the best job we can do. And then this is what that looks like up through there with its wire ties on it and whatnot. The wire runs down through there. Got another wire tie in there. I was able to sneak down through this hole. And then that's all you can see from up here. And that wire tie there is the one that I showed you from underneath. But we still have to answer the age old question. Does the gas door stonger work? Does the lumbar work? Where's that button at? Oh, I hear it, so that means that this button's gonna work. Hey, now that was easy. Oh, what? They wanna know how's it going and did you do everything? The folks that own this car? Mm -hmm. Oil dipstick. Check. Gas opener door. Check. Mm -hmm. What else was there? The mud flap. Mud flap. Reinstalled. Check. So can they come pick it up now? Yeah, I'm sitting here waiting for them basically. Basically. Done, basically, done, done. basically. Okay. Come and get it. Oh, that was right. So now I guess all we have to do is put on the plastic jiggly bit back on the front, straighten the wheel back out here, and we're done. Um, not my favorite way to do things, folks, but that's just how we do things. Did I put that plastic cover back on? I did, everything is back together as it was when it left the Lincoln plant in Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> That's not where Lincolns are made. That's that, folks. Let that be a lesson to you. I hope someday I can tell my kids, well, boy, when I was your age, I used to have to open my own gas door. We didn't have them fancy buttons. Remember them days? Well, having the fancy button just cost these folks a few bucks, not a lot, but enough. And um, that's that. I see I got some customers pulling in. It is towards the end of the day. So I got to get motor. And uh, in regards to that lady calling who took her car to the other shop who did the alleged oil change and now she has no oil, don't ever get caught up in that mess. If you're a shop owner and they call you up and they want you to be the, the middleman, I don't. You're welcome to bring it here. I'll look it over. I'll give you an assessment of is it leaking oil or not and then as far as I'm going to go. I don't go up against other shops and he said, she said, both. And uh, I just you do I do my own thing. Stay right out of that crap. Uh, and that's it. Hope you found this video fun, helpful. Uh, if you're linking this gas door thing, he's not working. Uh, at least you know how to check what my process is when I'm checking stuff. Why I go where I go, and to try to do the simplest, easiest to get to stuff first without tearing things apart, so you don't end up with you know door panels off and all that. So. Uh, anyhow, Mrs. O is going to come out. Why don't you guys go down there before she does, go in that comment box, leave a question, comment, criticism, or concern. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.